Today, I want to talk about defensive flying, a topic which was requested countless times, but always when I was thinking about making a video, I was unsure how to tackle the topic. Unsure because defensive flying has so many aspects, it's almost impossible to consider all of them in a concise video. At this point, we just acknowledge that it is a very complicated topic, and in this video I try to talk about the very essence of it. This video will cover, generally speaking, one-on-one -on -one situations, but when talking about general tactics, I will assume that we are fighting one versus many, since, in general, a good pilot assumes to fight against an unknown number of enemies. Furthermore, I assume we have no other tasks, we are flying in a freehand sortie. I do this because we have to limit the complexity of the topic a bit. In the case where you have other tasks, like escorting a bomber or covering a certain airspace, you sometimes have to fly less careful and have to ignore a few things I say today. So, having that sorted out, let's get going with this one. I personally, in my mind, like to put defensive flying in different layers, as in different escalation levels, how bad the situation is. As you can see, I think that defensive flying is not just rolling around and making the enemy overshoot. No, it's much, much more. The goal of good defensive flying is not to be in real danger in the first place. So it starts with being careful and goes to the point where you are in deep trouble and you are trying just to dodge the bullets. So ideally you are trying to climb up the ladder back to one if you ended up further down the chart. And of course, the stages you are in can change or can be skipped within fractions of seconds. I use this visualization of defensive flying because first it's comprehensible and secondly it gives you a nice feeling for what's important. Let me elaborate on that over the course of the video. The first layer or stage is to keep a high situation awareness level, SA in short. People like to believe in order to keep a high SA, you have to look around all the time. While this is of course true, you should try to look around as much as you can, there is more to it. You can help yourself keeping track of the happenings around you by adjusting your fighting style, for example. When you keep a high speed and a decent altitude over the course of your sortie, this increases the time needed for an enemy to catch up to you. And it gives you more time to spot the enemy in time. Furthermore, keep your attacks short and clean. The shorter your attacks are, the more time you have available to you to check your surroundings again. Try to minimize the time you are really in the offense and practice your skills in gunnery and approach. When you have a streak of unsuccessful approaches, try to stay patient and stick to your careful attacks. Don't get frustrated and don't become sloppy. If in doubt, use escape windows before they close. Always have an idea how to exit a fight. Always ask yourself, how do I get out of this when things go sideways? Ask yourself that question before you attack an enemy, or maybe even before you see an enemy. How do I get out of this place if things go wrong? The ability to detect and to get out of dangerous places before an enemy can exploit the situation is key to be a successful fighter pilot. For example, a lot of planes I shoot down have just finished a dogfight at low altitude. But instead of leaving the area right away horizontally, they try to climb up above enemy objectives. Those pilots are really easy pickings because they just exit a fight and have a very low SA at this point. Measure the quality of your sorties by the number of defensive dogfights you had, not the kills. The lower the number of defensive dogfights, the better the sortie is. After you learn how to fly defensively and smart, you will find at some point the balance between staying aggressive and flying safe. Stage 2. Acting upon detected danger. So you are now keeping ISA and sooner or later you will detect an enemy, which could be a danger soon-ish. Maybe an enemy a little bit above you or even on your altitude. We just assume for this stage that the enemy hasn't seen you yet or is preoccupied with something else. But you must act upon the danger. While ignoring the danger could work, usually Murphy's Law applies. So you must do something about it. The most common action is just to fly away and fly to that direction where getting spotted is less likely. For example, break the line of sight. Try to bring a cloud in between you and the enemy, fly into the sun and so on. 
try to make spotting hard and increase the distance between you and the enemy. Alternatively or simultaneously work on your energy. Keep him in sight, don't forget the world around you. Make sure that he can't harm you and continue with your business later. Very often uh, such an enemy is not seeing you, is just diving on somebody else or is even leaving the area and from there on you can hunt him down and you can go into the offense. But you have to react in time. So those are the first two layers of defensive flying. Keeping a high SA and to act upon danger very early is a very essence of defensive flying. Most virtual death can be avoided by following those. As you can see, no fancy maneuvering required, just flying and looking around. Should those two layers fail, we get to stage 3. Avoid getting attacked. So let's say, similar situation, but this time you are detected and the enemy is coming from a higher energy state. But since you kept a high SA, you have time to react and you can think about your options. It basically comes down to two basic options, to be aggressive or to be defensive. Let's talk about the aggressive option first. A lot of pilots are only comfortable in situations they can predict with relative certainty. So if you fly away and dive away, they might be encouraged to follow you since they can just think offensively. Time to crush that fantasy of theirs and let's defend ourselves with some bold moves. For that I like to turn into that dude and just go for the head on. Most of the time I don't want to shoot really, I really like to evade his guns and after the pass it shows what he's made of. A skilled pilot pulls up, puts himself above you and attacks again right away from a high energy state. A averagely skilled player maybe just flies through and dives away, a little bit afraid. A very low skilled player might turn into you, bleeds his energy away and overshoots, leaving you in the offense. And there are of course 1000 other possibilities somewhere in between. I really see them all. The main purpose however of this action, this aggressive action is to force the enemy to act instead of giving the enemy all the cards. Very often this forces mistakes and exploits greedy pilots. But of course it's not always possible to fly that aggressively, for example if other threats are around. In such a case we have to fly more defensively and most of the time it makes sense to leave the area and to fly away from those threats and towards your mates and your airfield. The enemy knows as well that if he spends too much time chasing you, the risk increases for him that he gets some uninvited guests. So sometimes the guy breaks off and looks for easier targets. This defensive behavior has the goal to make you an unattractive and nasty target to attack, which is not worth the time pursuing. The situation is if the enemy breaks off already solved for you. And this is how I solve most of my defensive situations when I have an enemy on my tail and I am alone. Sometimes I just do a roll or two. Um, this signals the enemy that I have seen him. I have a feeling sometimes that this throws many people already off and they break off and fly away. However, if he is still following, you can start to energy fight him by diving in a shallow angle. Try to keep your distance to the enemy and don't let him get closer. The slight dive decreases potential energy, altitude and converts it into kinetic energy, speed, for both fighters. But since both planes can only reach a certain dive speed, the amount of energy stored in kinetic energy is for both planes kinda limited. And as, as soon as the aircrafts reach roughly the same speed and altitude, your pursuer has a smaller energy advantage than before the dive. In such a case you have successfully equalized the energy states without doing a lot of maneuvering. The only advantage the attacker now has is position. From this point on you can fly away if you are in a faster plane, you cannot climb him in a better climbing plane or in a slower plane you bought time. You have dragged the enemy to safer airspace and increased the chances to beat him in a maneuvering fight. Alternatively, as the enemy comes closer, you can enter a steeper dive to get rid of him, to outdive him. This is very good of course in well diving aircraft like the Focke-Wulf 190s or a P-39 for example. A steeper dive paired with rolls will throw off most attackers for the time being. However, this move has a couple of disadvantages. For example, that you kill a lot of energy at once, which makes you vulnerable against other unseen enemies. 
and you usually give up all your offensive options in the future so you can't beat him basically you just give up and this makes your position worse in the long run if your attacker is persistent and is able to follow advantages of such a dive are that the pursuit will take much more time for the enemy the chances are getting higher that he gets attacked by teammates of yours and Another factor is that he has to keep track of you against the ground, which is sometimes hard. Over forests and lakes and stuff, this is not that easy. And another advantage for you is that if your pursuer flies a structurally inferior aircraft, he has to work around and never exceed speed all the time. Which is totally possible, but costs time. So you notice, as always, it's basically mandatory to learn the strength and the weaknesses of all planes sooner or later and of course to identify the planes you are facing. Otherwise you can't make an informed decision to run, to climb, to turn or to dive. Spoil the attack. Stage 4 kicks in if the enemy is close and we can't avoid the attack anymore. But we can make it hard. What you should do is highly dependent on the situation, but we can go through a few situations to give you an idea. First, let's talk about the situation that an enemy is following you after the shallow dive and has slightly more energy now and you have to avoid getting shredded. In such a situation I personally like to force a moving fight. A fight where you still move into a general direction and not toil and burn on one spot. This has the advantage that you keep speed, that you can bring the fight towards a spot which is more favorable for you and to get valuable time. My favorite defensive moves are energy traps, done with a shallow descending turn which the attacker has to follow to get guns on. From there on you have different options to avoid getting hit and to create overshoots. The first and the most common one is to wait that the enemy has picked up enough speed so his controls are locked up. Then to pull up a little bit and to do a barrel roll to get out of the way. Alternatively you can do tighter rolls and to fade a few moves until you decide in which direction to go. Left, right or split S. You have to decide in dependence of the enemy's actions and according to the distance of the enemy behind you. Don't wait too long, otherwise the enemy will hit you. If the enemy still chases you directly, you can follow up with rolling scissors. Rolling scissors have the goal to minimize forward travel while keeping airspeed. The rolls need to be flown with varying amounts of aileron deflection, rudder input and throttle. All very dependent on the situation, but it's generally necessary to cut the throttle to stay at a good maneuvering speed around 300 kph indicated, depending on aircraft. While rolling, try to stay out of the flight path of the enemy, so he gets no or bad firing solutions. The ultimate goal is to hook the enemy in to make him overshoot while he has from there on not enough airspeed to escape and to shoot him down. Well, that's the ideal scenario. Very often the enemy does not commit to a rolling scissors and just goes straight up to attack a gun. And if he is coming in again, it's rinse and repeat. Get him fast, roll out of the way, get out of his gun envelope and try to hook him in in those rolling scissors. Make sure you don't do the same all the time, otherwise you become very predictable. Furthermore, make sure you keep some altitude. Use the brakes in his attacks to gain some altitude or speed. This is important to have some energy left after a few attacks. Novice pilots like to burn a lot of energy in their, in their defensive maneuvers and are basically out of energy after like two or three attacks or something like this. This makes it very easy to shoot you down. So be conservative with your maneuvers, try to turn as much as you need to, but don't turn too hard. Should you succeed and you end up in the offense, be careful. Since it's relatively likely that some other enemy has seen the fight and can exploit your very low situation awareness, I can't count how many times I killed somebody in the offense, which is for example pulling up to an enemy in a prop hang. But let's say the enemy attempts again and again to shoot you down in high speed passes and eventually you run out of altitude since you converted all the energy you had into defensive maneuvers. From here on, it's really a pure fight for survival. In any case, you have to avoid that the enemy's aircraft can settle up on you, because as soon as you have an enemy really close on your 6, it's super hard to get rid of him, even when he's flying the less maneuverable aircraft. 
So as soon as you see him coming in, try to roll out of this plane of flight constantly. Watch his moves and move out of the gun envelope with rolls, negative and positive G drugs and some rudder drugs. With less and less energy available to you, you have to decide if you can still do barrel rolls or if you have to resort to flat scissors or even brake turns. Brake turns are, if done in time, great to avoid getting hit, but they will ruin your energy state further. But as a last ditch maneuver, certainly viable. In such a situation, your main goal is to survive and to buy time. You never know what happens. Sometimes the enemy really botches the entire attack and hits a tree, or at some point a teammate arrives. But Close quarter defensive flying remains a risky business with relatively low success rates. So you better stay up in the higher defensive flying stages and as soon as you can work your way up if you need to. If you get hit and you think you have no chance anymore, don't be ashamed to bail out. It's better to save your pilot's life than to just to go down in flames and to lose your virtual life. On some servers this is important to do. So, and this is it for today. I hope I gave you a good overview. I know it's not in depth here and there. This is maybe a thing for another time to go more in depth about flat scissors, more in depth about rolling scissors or whatever. But this video had the purpose to give you a broad overview about the uh, defensive flying and to basically make clear that defensive flying starts way, way, way before the actual maneuvering stuff. And then of course the entire defensive flying, even from SA to really the nitty gritty maneuvering is difficult. You need to practice, you have to get out there, you have to fly in multiplayer ideally and you have to practice all the maneuvers and, uh, and work on your SA and stuff. Nobody spares you the practice and that is the great thing about virtual combat. You can repeat mistakes, you can learn even when the outcome of one dogfight is the worst imaginable. I thank my patrons for supporting me now for such a long time. If you aren't a supporter yet, please consider a pledge on Patreon or on PayPal. Most importantly, I hope I see you in the next one.